This is Londa and having cleaned out totally my sunroom sewing studio, as I informed my husband this morning, it's time for me to play. I started taking photographs and decided I would just make my selection of fabrics to use in this project a video, that that would be simpler. From Arrow, nice jersey top in navy, all right? I'll put it on my dress form here in a minute. Then I had already pulled together with it this scrap of a rayon. Actually, this it wasn't a scrap. This was a skirt. Here, let me stand up. You can see that it's a border print. This was a skirt that I had made from this fabric that I carried at my shop when I had it years ago. And I distinctly remember having created these bell-bottom <laughs> pants and a top with some beading on it to wear to my 25-year class reunion. And now when I look at the size of these pants, it inspires me to just drink as I create instead of drink and eat. The top and the border print. Now, because it's a border print, I probably could have stopped right there and as I took a dive into my collection of patterns and tear outs and printouts that I've collected for tops, I found this pattern. It's an old new look, but do you see the first thing that jumped into my mind was this neckline. Do you see how low it comes? Since it's on a V that low, I could do that probably by taking out this button tab part of this shirt. It might be a little lower, but really it comes a bit above the bust level, the lowest point. And on this shirt, looking at the armholes, I can say that the boobs would be about here. So that's a possibility and that would be simple and quick. However, for some reason, I always go away from the simple and quick. I just had to take a dive into my stash. And I have my stash collected in bins according to color families. So I dived into my navy and brown stash. It was at that point, actually, that I found the pants. They are in very good shape, even though they're quite tiny. I could sell them along with this top, but I also found some other pieces. I found this good size piece that has more of the border print on it and a few other generous size pieces of that fabric. So I think that gives me plenty of the print without using the pants. While I was diving, that's what I like to call it, diving, I also came across some suede. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell this or not, but as I looked at tan colors that would pull out the leaves and the, these palm tree-like things, I found both of these. I hope you can see why I rejected this one. This is more of a taupe. It's a tan with pink in it. So that really is not what's going on in here. This is more of a tan with yellow in it. That's what led me away from that ultra suede into this, like a tricot back, really nice lightweight suede fabric. So that's a real possibility. However, I do realize anywhere I use that, light colors attract the eye, dark colors recede. So wherever I would use that, it would really draw attention. I could use it just as a little piping, a little flat flange type accent to accentuate lines. The other thing I found in that stash was my box of ties. So here's my box of ties. And actually within each one of those color family bins, 
I have collected a box of ties. What I do with my ties is that I take the ties apart and I get rid of the guts, just tear them apart, maybe press them, maybe not, maybe wash them, maybe not, and then just fold them up and put them in my little shoe box here so I can see what ties I have. All right. So when I went to that tie box, I found these two that I liked. Between these two, I'm definitely going to choose the lighter one. Ties are bias, so that's gonna be great. The reason I'm rejecting this one is that the dark brown just really, I don't like the way it works with the lighter tans in this print. So that one's going away and we'll make use of this one. Maybe, just because I find it doesn't mean I'll make use of it. Do you see this kind of wear line here along what was the folded edge of the tie? Just not sure, but it's a possibility. All right, some other things that I found when I went looking is this wonderful piece of Cupramonium rayon. It's very drapey, but it's really more of a almost black. I know it doesn't look like that, but it, it's a dark navy and it just has a different, you know how navies are different and blacks are different? I actually found two pieces of this, which is a, a wonderful fabric. So that one got rejected just based on color. I also had this piece. Again, this is more pink. It's more taupe. This is a dress that I purchased at a uh, resale shop. So that one got tossed aside. So here I am, likely with these three things, maybe the tie, maybe not. I might use the tie and not the suede or vice versa, but that's what I have to work with. What about design? I, I think, I don't think, I, I know that people feel like I just start or that any designer just with fabric and comes up with the ideas. Well, that may be the case for some people, but that's not how it works for me. Do you see here, I have one bin of ideas for jackets, some of my patterns and things, and I have another bin for tops. I quickly went through this and let me just run through these possibilities. This is a line drawing that I printed out from the internet of Butterick 6564. I, I'm pretty sure it's a Marcy or Catherine Tilton pattern. Very honestly, I don't need to go spend the money on the pattern. I can look at this and take that division of space and use that as the inspiration to create this top. But that's not the only idea I got. There's this photograph. Again, as I am out there on the internet, if I see something that I like, I do a screenshot, file it in one of my computer folders, and then print it out. I have to have it printed out. This is easier to me than keeping it on my computer. But again, do you see there's really, it looks like three different fabrics here. So that gives me an idea of what I could do looking at clothing. That's certainly a suitable way of using a tie. Just applique in this manner, the tie would curve like that. But the tie that I'm using, well, no, I don't think so. Here's another one, well, kind of swingy, interesting, perhaps. We'll keep that in the maybe pile. This one, um, to me, the fabric has more drape than what is shown here. So this is for some stiffer type fabrics, in my opinion. It just doesn't take advantage of the drapey, swingy quality of the rayon print. So I'm gonna reject that one. Here's another. The focal point there is those buttons. So, yep. This is all one fabric, just cut on different grains, but I could see that might work. And here's just the back of yet another one. So 
I have plenty of ideas, springboards with which to work. So next I think it's time to go look at the buttons. I think I'm just showing off here because I took so much time to clean everything out. Let me start with this wonderful old tin. I can honestly remember sitting with my grandma at a cardboard table, sorting through buttons, matching them all up, threading them on heavy thread. Right now this has just little miscellaneous buttons in it, but at 68, closer to 69, I'm starting to think, I've got so many precious things. I just want somebody to know someday if by chance, hopefully it would mean anything to them. And I think that might be the case with my dear new daughter-in-law that this is my grandma Rupp's button box. All right. Then I took my blacks and I separated them into basic black and gray jeweled buttons and great black buttons. These are jars of cashews, cashew jars from Aldi's, which I think are just great for storing buttons. And you note that they even are separated into bags within here. And there's my metallics. But here in this cookie tin are my white and cream and to cover buttons. So that's the one I'm gonna dig into. And this one has colored buttons, bundle of pearl and abalone. Um, I might want to look in there. And this was a box that my mom, it came with cookies, but this was a box that my mom always had in her sewing room. Well, let's see what we can find in the white cream box. Here is my tan button collection laid out. Definitely too yellow. Don't think I want to introduce any metallic into this and there's only one. Now if I go with this neckline I certainly don't have to have three matching buttons. It could be three totally different or two and one. So with that in mind there are these although those are pretty run-of-the-mill. These are very small. Um, this is a wonderful toggle. I don't know that deserves more of a coat type piece. These definitely have too much pink in them. And again, not of the right character. These antler type buttons, um, those are really special to me. Those came from a furry plus heavy knit coat that my mom had. So those are really special. And I don't really think that this garment is gonna be one that I will keep. It will be one that I will sell. So the idea of letting go of those special buttons, it, I'm not gonna do that. I do have, however, I have three of this one, which tends to be on the little bit yellower side. The other thing that I note on them is the very rounded character. And um, there is really no, well, Here's some, some roundy type lines. So perhaps, although they really seem a little too yellowy, this one especially has a, a gold or blotch on it. So not really liking that. Several of these, but they have this brown blob on them. Um, not sure. These mother of pearl buttons, I have, and I really kind of like those, and I have three of them. So at this point, I cannot decide for sure. And that's how it usually goes. But I'm going to, after auditioning these guys, I am going to keep out this, two of these, the best two of those, and these here. And these mother of pearl buttons. Always consider the back side of just a two hole button that might be better than the front. Always an option, gets a little pinky. But again, as I say, these are gonna be the buttons that I keep out for maybe, maybe not putting into this garment. On the ties, this is the right side of the tie, 
and here's the wrong side of the tie, which generally doesn't have the spots that you might find on the right side of the tie. So I'll keep that in mind as I work. So here's my collection. I have put those buttons that I decided upon in a bag so that they're less likely to get misplaced. I have, as I laid out my ideas, I have for the time being set aside these two inspiration papers and settled in on these. There was one that I had neglected to point out and that is this one. And what I like about this is just the, uh, the different fabric, in this case it's a solid, that goes down the shoulder and down the top of the sleeve. I could see that that might be interesting, especially if I leave the rest of the garment more um, simple. So that's where I'm at. And now I'm gonna go put this together into a video to share with you.